presenter, which is online, Marcus During, that will talk about building upon the functionality of Checklist Bank. Marcus, are you there? Hello, Marcus. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you, can you hear me? There you are. Yeah. Hi, Ola. <laughs> Everybody can hear you and the presentation is ready. Perfect. Um, so, hi, everyone. I'm Marcus Döring. I work for GBIF and Catalog of Life and uh, are the main developer of Checklist Bank, which I gave a talk about uh, last year already. And today I want to focus a bit on what we could be doing next uh, to make it more useful. So next slide, please. Um, what, one before, please. Yeah, that one. So um, just a simple overview, you've heard about it before. Check this bank is an open repository, checklistbank.org uh, for sharing taxonomic and nomenclatural data. It, um, has an open JSON REST API um, it's developed jointly by GBIF and Catalog of Life these days. There's nearly 15,000 data sets, most of them from Plasi though, uh, in that system. It comes with rich metrics uh, and for data quality at least, I think it's highly important that we are flagging issues in a systematic way uh, when data is imported, which helps publishing data a lot. It has various tools for searching, browsing, for downloading data in different formats, uh, for name matching, um, for duplicate detection. So you can look for homonyms or similar names, different status and rich set of filters to, to, to find those. Um, and it has comparison tools for comparing subsets of data sets and uh, for versions of the same data set actually also. Um, for developing the catalog of life checklist, we have created generic project tools that allow you to build and maintain taxonomies using some of the sources that are in Checklist Bank. Um, so next slide please. Oh, yeah. One of the things that still discover is that Checklist Bank only contains the current version of a data set. <clears throat> that um, we do archive, we keep a history of metrics and we keep a history of just a plain list of names that allows us to do versioning or show differences between versions of a data set, as you can see, maybe you can see at the top. There's a slight change in an authorship in one of Donald's lists, for example. Um, but other than that, it is really just the latest version that is there. So when you uh, match to a, a list in Checklist Bank and use its identifier and keep it in your database or something, you will be linking to the current version of the thing, not the one that you have been using at the time you have matched it. And for these kind of use cases, it would be useful to have a more archive of Taxon names that uh, you will be able to actually point in time back to exactly that version as you have seen it at that time. Um, we, we we probably wouldn't be able to do this uh, by integrating it completely into the API and make it searchable for all historic versions, but at least being able to resolve identifiers in uh, into the exact same format as it was at the time should be really useful for linking things. So on the right, you can see there's just slight changes in the authorship uh, between the versions. Next slide, please. Well, another not so greatly looking idea is the taxon concept index. The idea is that we most systems that we work with actually have name-based identifiers. So the identifier strictly the name, but if the content of a taxon is really the same, just the accepted name changes, that usually leads to a change in identifiers. And um, we think it's, uh, I definitely think it would be great to keep, to index all data and check this bank 
by uh, by a by a computable objective mechanism that uh, looks at homotopic sets of homotopic groups, so protonyms that Rich Pyle has uh, also laid out, um, and that way being able to create more stable identifier uh, if the name changes and to more accurately pinpoint a taxonomic concept. It's not as good probably programmatically as you would be able to do it in a manual version, but it would give you a very um, repeatable and objective basis of defining those concepts. And for that, we're looking really into just synonymy and homotypic relations and basically a proxy of type specimens um, that define the concept. So you see in that example, if you can read it like Tukta or Aria, there's three homotypic groups uh, with different combinations in each of them and one even a nomen novum a replacement name based on the same type so it does even have a different epithet but these three kind of types would define a, a concept um, and if you would have lectura area in a list that doesn't include all of the heterotypic types it would be treated as a different concept next slide please more for quality issues. Um, I've been hearing quite a bit about this, uh, the use case of a subscription service that people get notified about activity in a data set or a record or more often probably a subset of a data set that you can <laughs> subscribe to information about changes in, for, for example, Fabesi names and the catalog of life. And such a service would notify you by email or a web hook that allows programmatically to um, register for changes. <clears throat> and you, it could be looking at additions, changes, uh, when a classification is changed or if a record got deleted. And it obviously needs some filters <clears throat> to really pinpoint down the, the set of changes that you want to look at by filtering for ranks and for a higher taxon like for Bayesian group. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing I always thought would be useful is uh, this uh, discussion thread. So I'm really a big fan of the GitHub issue system. Uh, we make use of GitHub issues actually for, for GBIF, for the backbone, and also for Catalog of Life to capture feedback from people. But it is somehow difficult because people have to have a GitHub account. It feels very technical to some people to get involved there. And it doesn't really allow easy linkage with anything in Check This Bank. So a similar system I would be dreaming of that does just very easy bi-directional links in those comments where you can just link to a data set, link to a user in Check This Bank, and most importantly to names in Check This Bank in some data sets. Um, that you can build up discussions uh, which are all open and document decisions. Why have things changed? Um, yes, and you would have to have a GitHub account, but it would all be part of Check This Bank. I don't think it's that complicated to do it actually, and but I think that would be a useful tool. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, is you still? Uh, ah, ah, here, no. back again. Yeah, back again. Th thank you. N next slide, please. Out again, or? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Hey, I can't even, I, don't, I hear you fine. Okay, what's the, oh. what's the issue? Uh, I don't know, just the next slide, please. Sorry, if you can. I don't see any slide any longer. No, we, uh, we do need our, so please, please hold. Okay, yeah, sure. Right, number five, yeah, that's the one. Perfect, thank you. Um, 
well, one of the other ideas that we have for a long time is a review space for, for global list owners. So the catalog of life is made up of uh, global sectors. So there's sources that really contribute that we think are globally complete for specific taxonomic groups or sectors, as we call them. And we are very much working on an extended catalog of life checklist, as you've heard earlier today, I believe, um, where we merge information, extend the checklist with non-global lists, so information from regional or thematic lists. And um, that extra information, which we have in this extended catalog of life, we would like to feed back to the actual um, publishers of the global sources. If there's a name within the diptera that has been added in the extended list because we found it in some regional South American lists, it might be quite useful for for, for, for Systema Dipterum to, to know that there's a few names which we consider to belong to the sector, but which they are lacking currently. So to provide a space for them to view that extra information with filters again to just see relevant entries because clearly can be overwhelming in some areas or you might not be interested in subspecific ranks or uh, vernacular names not at all or just of a certain language um, and with a with a view that allows you also to to remember and reject and accept changes in there uh, providing downloads for you to locally make use of that and integrate it into your to your local system. Next slide, please. Um, well, lastly, there's um, a stronger GitHub integration that we could be thinking of. So the GitHub repositories has been proven really, really useful for managing smaller to medium sized data sets um, by placing basically code AP uh, or Darwin Core files as CSV or tabular delimited files um, into the into a separate repository. So for every data set you just be creating a, a new repository. GitHub automatically compresses and packages up the data in a zip file which is can be easily then consumed by Checklist Bank or any other person. Um, it is natively doing the versioning for you. It can even show tabular data if it's not too large very well. Um, and we could be implementing more integration with that, that you can just export to GitHub straight from Checklist Bank. It will create repositories for you. Um, there is There are triggers, uh, webhooks in GitHub that allow you to trigger imports to Checklist Bank that is already existing. So if you have a, a GitHub repository, you can configure the webhooks there to, to inform Checklist Bank that the data has changed and immediately the data will be imported on every change in GitHub to Checklist Bank. So that automatically keeps, uh, keeps the systems up to date. And potentially there would be even ideas that you can build some small editing tools or some other little little scripts on top of uh, such a repository that we can all share and use. Um, I think that's my last slide. Check. Yes, um, so thank you very much. If Thank you, Marcus. Um, any questions from the room? No, we're done. <laughs> okay, then thank you all for attending this session and thanks to all the speakers also in the first session and the